You are tuned into the new Old Heads podcast, premiered every Thursday at noon at bringingdowntheband.com and brought to you by No Bad Ideas, Coleman Dental, Printfinity, and Indie CD and Vinyl. Support the new Old Heads by visiting our Patreon at patreon.com slash newoldheads. Episode 164 of the new Old Heads podcast. I am Major 7th. I make pretty good beasts, so they say. We'll leave that up to the public to decide. Uh, across the table from me, as always, able to professor, DJ, I'm sorry, academics, DJ school professor, super producer, and also founder of BringingDownTheBand.com, my man, Longevity. How are you, sir? Doing well. How are you? I'm sorry, I stumbled through your, your introduction. There. Sorry, you called me a super DJ or something? No, I didn't want to say that. Don't do that, because you're going to get my <laughs> blood pressure up. We're not going down that route. I uh, appreciate yeah. you, though. Shout out to Lone. I'm going to tell you a quick story real quick. Okay. Long gave me a focus right. Um, uh, is inbox the correct term? No, it's a, it's called a just fo- focus right. Just focus right. It's an interface. Interface. So I've been needing one of these for my laptop. So salute to the homie, man. He blessed me with a early chroma, gri- chroma gift. So I appreciate you for that, man. You know, I've needed that for a while. So I am. Uh, the cards very- fell. Yes, the cards fell. So good looking out, bro. I really need that. So I'm excited to get that plugged in and. We hope that thing work. Across the table, fresh to death as always, DJ Extraordinaire, CEO of Printfinity, and also longtime longtime contributor to BringingDownTheBand.com, my man DJ J. Diff. Salutations. What's happening, man? How you doing there? Good, sir. Good to see you as always, brother. All right. How's the father life? It's good, man. Yeah? Yeah, man. I, I like it. I yeah. like it a lot. Good. Yeah. I like how you said a lot. A lot. Yeah, put a little swag to that. To my immediate left, DJ Extraordinaire, avid Chicago sports fanatic. He is the CEO of his own life, the incomparable DJ Spools. Hello, Michael. What's happening, man? Much, man. How are you? Hey, I'm doing good. Good to see you as always. I see you rocking that print, Finity, Mary Kruma. That's right, man. Tis the season. Tis the season. It's the Kruma season. So. Shout out, tell me about the Bears real quick, man, before we get started. I don't nobody want to hear about the goddamn I mean, he, Bears. He, he, we I, lost it, to the Packers. There yeah. you go. On so it's Sunday, a wrap. 21-13. We're 7-6. and six. Officially eliminated? 7-7. Seven and 7-7. Seven. Seven and seven, That's right. Okay. Yeah. So you guys are officially eliminated or no? Is there a chance? Uh, pretty much. Pretty much. Pretty much? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, the Vikings won too. So they're in mm-hmm. the Rams. I think they won too. They lost to the Cowboys. Oh, did they? Yeah. So you probably- We play you, the Vikings the last game of the season. Mm. But so you, your the, division- But that spot- the could last be taken by, by I think the Vikings is the last spot though. Yeah. Playoffs. So like so the Rams and the Bears playoffs? are fighting for seventh right now. We did beat them actually in the regular earlier in this season. Hmm. So I wonder so, if we tie with them somehow. Tiebreaker for second place if we get the tiebreaker. Yeah, I don't know. So it's probably gonna be the Packers. It's slim. And, it's very very slim. Yeah, we're not gonna win the division though. No. Okay, so Packers and Vikings are probably the two representatives. <laughs> yeah. We basically have to division. beat Kansas City and then beat Minnesota in the next two weeks. I don't know. Is, I don't know about that, pools. I'm sorry. And then, so, and then a whole bunch of other shit has to happen too <laughs> for us to. So it's yeah, slim. cute Jim Carrey and Dumb and Dumber. So there's still a chance. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> yeah. You're telling me there's a chance. That's what's up on the couch as always from his remote position. Yep, if you will, uh, <laughs> former. Radio personality, master of ceremonies, and a voice of Indianapolis is what I call him. My man Jay Moore is in the building rocking the Hillman uh, College sweatshirt that y'all cannot see. What's happening, my man? I'm doing well, man. You know, just yeah. uh, trying to get into the holiday spirit. You know, when you hustle, sometimes it takes away from that. I heard that, man. They say you be out in them streets. So I'm talking about positively, by the way. Selling bean uh, pies. Is that what streets. you do? Yeah. <laughs> That's what I heard. Yeah, Incense. Okay. In them streets. Does, oh, incense. <laughs> Sell CDs and movies at, the, at check cash and places. Already. Yeah. Jay Moore got that knock chamba if y'all need that. Get it. Uh, two for five. What are the other incense? Uh, what's the famous sense of those? Nag chamba is the one that always Nag go. Champa. Nag chamba. Nag chamba. There you go. That's Thank the you. best. Yeah. That's I, the best the one. First that's, time well, that's what I, I like the most. First time I saw that on Commons album, I was I like, was what is Nag that? Champa? <laughs> <laughs> A little bit of that black love, man. Oh, black love. Jay Moore, you got black love all day, every day. Yeah, <laughs> told, told you. That's what's up, man. With that sweet pussy. People know this. <laughs> oh, they got that too. Yeah, man. I don't know about that one. Word. You're a yeah. rookie. Well, you might get bad pussy. Then what? Bad. Yeah. The First of all, they bad. don't sell that. <laughs> <laughs> well, they do, <laughs> they do sell that, but not. Say, I yeah. think it's we talk about something different. <laughs> She's an easy lover. <laughs> <laughs> selling it. Hey, Jay Moore's what? third eye is open. I see you over there. Yeah. I see you over there. 
Okay. She's All like right. no other, man. <laughs> All right, man. So yeah, okay, let's move on. Yeah, let's get get past this foolishness. Speaking of foolishness, um, so apparently by the time this comes out, uh, six nine will have been sentenced. Uh, they say that uh, I'm, I'm reading this. This is a report that I found somewhere online. I think this is legit. Spool, you have to tell me if it's not, because I know you check me on my sources. Uh, the controversial rapper who. Uh, rose to prominence in 2017 before being arrested on federal racketeering charges in 2018. He's currently facing 37 years to life in prison. However, uh, since cooperating with the U.S. Attorney's Office following his arrest, it's possible or even likely, according to some of some following uh, the trial closely, that he will be sentenced to sentence with time served and walk away free. Uh, after his sentencing so we talked about this a while back about the possibilities of what may happen if this were to happen so from what i'm seeing and when i'm you know the trends of social media whatever they're saying there's a possibility this kid might just get off and just walk away and well as i do my time yeah um it might actually happen today Is is it today if today is thursday yeah today is thursday I right. think he gets sentenced, if I'm not mistaken. I thought it was the 18th, which oh. is yeah. tomorrow. I, I think he's getting sentenced Wednesday. Wednesday. So it'll be the following day, man. Right, right. Yeah. This will have happened. Yeah, by the happens. time this comes out, yeah. yep. Okay. This is mad confusing. <laughs> <laughs> if yesterday is tomorrow, right, <laughs> follow me. Yeah. Expeditiously. I like that. I like that. Shout out to lean on me. Yes, sir. Um, okay. So it sounds like. That makes it clear. Yeah. Don't do that. 100%. <laughs> so it sounds like. Uh, there's a chance that we'll get to see if what we talked about, you know, and what we, you know, the, the options as to what may happen when this kid gets out, if he gets out, there's, it looks like there's a chance we might get a chance to see it play out. Like what artists are going to, you know, um, I guess takes quote unquote risks to try to do features and things of that nature, how this kid has to move and how he has to pay for security and who's going to book him for shows and, you know what city's gonna take him in, and how's the security gonna be set up? Like, how long he's going to live <laughs> if he true. decides that he wants to actually be out here in the public? Because true, he'll get out of New York. He'll be just fine. He just can't live in New York. I don't know, B. You don't, don't think know. so? I don't know. Nah, I don't know either. It's gonna be tough, man, because it's a lot of people mad. Like, Boosie's still mad about that. Mm. Like, there's an interview with him. He had an interview with Vlad. Uh, I think after Vlad asked him about how much drugs he used to sell and, you know, how he was raised in a single parent home, I guess they got to talking about uh, 6 9 And, um, you know, you got to ask that first. Like, yeah, so, you know, how poor were you? Like, were you guys that poor or how poor were you? Like, once he get past all that. Did you have real franken beans? <laughs> or? What kind of potted meat flavors did you have? <laughs> He's like, yeah, so when you slept outside, like, was it, Outside, outside. Was it in a tent or was it in a box? Yeah, yeah. Or were y'all on the car porch or were y'all out in the actual street? So My once house. he got past all that and, you know, Boosie's background. Side note, Boosie uh, got him th- 13 million views on one video. From when somebody broke in his car? I don't know if that's the one. No, that's new. That's new. Is that new? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But my thing is, Vlad is always someone that talks about he's for the culture and blah, 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 blah. But you really for them 13 million views. There's a lot of people out here that champion themselves for the culture. Uh Uh-huh. But um, if you tell them to explain that and the way they break that down to you, Uh it's obvious that they're not for the culture. To me, I just want to say that. No, I feel you. To me, it's more about the 13 million views. It has shit to do with Boosie's life, his story, et cetera. It's more about the 13 million views. But back to this kid. So there's a lot of people that are still mad, you know, at this young man for what he did. And I'm sick of seeing people. I had this conversation. Well, I didn't have it, but, you know, via social media. You and I were talking about this before we start recording. Mm-hmm. Um, people are playing him as if he he's to get sympathy because, you know, the black guys took advantage of him. And I'm like, this is a grown man, first of all. Second of all, he chose to do this. Third of all, he benefited from them providing him with the security blanket to talk all that shit online. So you get what you sign up for. Am I also, wrong when I say let's that? Let's not confuse gang culture with hip hop culture. Okay. There's there's two different entities. They may, because I mean, gang culture did not start within the black community for one. Mm-hmm. That's been around for years. Gangs and years. of New York is a movie, right? 
breaks that gang down. culture and hip hop culture are not the same. So when you're confusing the two and trying to meld them together to create a point or some kind of sideways logic, it doesn't work like that. Yeah. I'm probably suppose you got you got anything two cents to add on this just just the concept of it overall and what be, what t- you know Terry and I just spoke about. Yeah, I think he's gonna end up. I th- if I if I were like a betting man, I think he's gonna end up getting somewhere between three and ten years. Three and ten. So you do not see him walking away within seventy two hours. No. Okay. I don't personally. Could be wrong. I'm not trying to put that on him either. Sure. Sure. For okay. everybody he told on, I don't think he should be able to just walk away, especially when he was, I don't know, man, the feds are interesting too. Like when you look at the way they build, like put some of this stuff together, like that 37 years, yeah, that was like a, that's a big number, you know, but he could also do anywhere between walking away and 37 years, you know, he can, they could drop certain charts, you know what I mean? So, but yeah, I think he's going to, that's my best guess, man. It's gonna be interesting to see, man. I like I said, I don't know. Nobody can predict this. It's, it's all you know. We just all have to wait and see. It's, feel like a movie. Some of this shit, but I mean, there is a some kind of documentary of sorts coming out this weekend. Oh, where in reference to Takashi, which is sponsored by I want to say, Complex and <laughs> Spotify. Really? And somebody else? Huh? Yeah. Okay. I didn't know that. I, yeah. I don't know. know if I really want to watch that. Right. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I'm not. I'm. You don't know about that one. And it when I be- say I think that's what he's gonna do, like I don't. I, I wish none of this happened and none of these cats were in jail. You know what I mean? Like right. that's at the end of the day. But like, just because he told on a bunch of guys, I don't think you should be able to walk, like walk away. Scott, I mean, the, the way, they, the way that he did, did that it. a lot back in the day, though. The ones that did get caught and yeah. put in protective custody. Well, yeah, they weren't trying to sing songs with Sinatra, though. I mean, they mm. did. Um, Nicky I mean, Barnes. Barnes, yeah, yeah. There he you. told on everybody and died. You know, a fr- he was mm. in a couple weeks after Frank Lucas, right? weren't they clo- the weren't they time. close when they passed away? Like, wasn't it within? I don't know. I'm guessing maybe a month's time. I don't, I don't it know. Was, don't quote it, me. It, it was close. Yeah. It was so, it was close. But you know, the guy who got him to testify, Rudolph Giul- Rudy Giuliani. Man, but that's Would who you basically set that? all that up. So when you see what's going on now, <clears throat> that's in tough. The White House, Rudy Giuliani's right there. I mean, there his again. last name is Giuliani. Imagine the connections he had. Mm, how plugged is he? I mean, I couldn't he tell you, but he helped bring the mob down in New York City. He was, there was a hit on him at one point. <clears throat> yeah, mm, probably was, but I'm sure he probably ate off something. Oh no! And question. then it slowed up. Yeah, and then he took another round. I mean, I'm just speculating, but anyway, yeah, all speculation. Yeah, but um, no facts, no facts. <laughs> but yeah, I don't think you should just be able to walk. I mean, I don't know. It's not cool. But no, I don't think so either, man. But he has no points in the federal system, and right, you know, he has state charges, but nothing. Are they all our state charges? I mean, mm-hmm. like the whole thing with the underage girl, like that has nothing to do with the feds. With the feds, right? So. What about all the other shit, like the robberies and all that other shit? Robber- the robberies. You know. But it, it's the feds <laughs> he, that he indicted comes up as him, a sympathetic though, right? character in, in yeah. some of that stuff. I guess. You know, he's like, oh, these gang members, they put me in a position. And he's like, when he wrote the letter to the judge. That I signed up for. Yeah. Like that I chose to. Hmm. Yeah, it's going to be part, interesting. That I chose to partake in, so. Yeah, but he was like, oh, the you know, the feds saved me from this life of crime. And he's trying to come off as somebody completely different now. Hmm. What you think? What you think, Lo? Oh, I don't give any fucks. I ain't think so. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so zero fucks giving, man. Like uh, if he gets out, cool. Yeah, but that's not cool. No, I mean, what I mean, <laughs> if, if he gets out, cool. I know, I know we we can talk about it, but yeah. yeah, why are we talking about it now? It's all Fair speculation. Enough. It's all speculation. Yeah. All right. So, <laughs> not not to drown the parade out. Or Sorry, drown it. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. I love yeah, rain. Man, it was such a great topic. Shot, I love the, with, <laughs> shot the Macy's Day balloon. Let's just move down on. Everything. Yeah, I plan on just talking about that for an hour, but <laughs> I guess not. Yeah. Well, <laughs> so guess we got to continue no, but I on. think uh, <laughs> I feel you. <clears throat> Definitely feel you. I don't bit. feel like anything's changed, though, really. You know, like since the last we talked to him, it's just we're going to find out in like a week what's yeah, going to happen. We're just closer to seeing and to testing yeah. the waters of yeah. uh, how soft. Wow. Uh, uh, 
some of these people are and how many passes people are handing out. We'll yeah. see. We'll, we'll find see. out for sure. You know, it's funny, though. I, What's that? As much as I try to filter out a lot of like garbage in my life, just in general, I still find myself a little curious as to what's going to end up happening here. yeah i do i, I want to know honestly. and this is usually shit i'm usually like because okay it's about a dude whose music i didn't like agree doing a bunch of shit i don't like you know what i mean like why should i care right. <laughs> you know what yeah. i mean but yeah. i can't help but just wonder like is this kid gonna get off like yeah you know, for all this shit? i just it'll be a know. summer jam next year yeah. and then right like, like listening to the, him testifying In a and shit, box. like Shout Shout to, uh, it had to be a Pope bulletproof glass box if he's going to be said, See, I don't box. think inside wow. no, I don't think it's going to be that bad for him, man. Mm-hmm. Outside of New York to Jay Moore's point. Yeah. Things are don't jam is in New York because yeah, I don't think he's going to be there. Ebro might not even let him come I in. I wouldn't go. If I were him, I mean seriously, <laughs> go if if he's going to continue go to Europe. Yeah. On the crip side of things though, Blueface wow. is out here <laughs> saying I saw that. Uh that Certain artists shouldn't make music. And this is Blueface saying that shit. Sir, you need to learn to rhyme on beat. Yeah. Wait. Aren't they different? They're different kinds of bloods, though. Like, the blood sets in New York are part of, the, like, the United Blood Nation. And then the blood sets in the West Coast are a different thing. I couldn't even tell you. This is just speaking on a fake crip who's <laughs> managed oh, by a, a blood. What, who, where does that happen? I don't know, man. I stay out of grown folks' business, so I don't know. Your managers are blood. Uh huh. You're a crip. Yeah. That didn't even say rest in peace to Nipsey. And Crip walks who, on who was YouTube. Who was a rolling often. '60s crip. Right. All right. What did he say though? I didn't hear what. You, Some to the line that. of. Uh, he's talking about Shiggy, Chiggy or Chiggy, oh the though. comedian Chiggy. slash comedian dude. He's trying yeah. to make music now. I guess I'm not surprised. So he told him try to give that, him advice. Yeah. <laughs> That's that stupid. he's known for for making people laugh, and ain't nobody gonna mess with him wow. if he's making music. But yeah. uh, Jamie Fox is a comedian. Yeah, that Eddie Murphy. Eddie Murphy. Jamie talented though, man. You can't really, you know, what's interesting. He's talented here yeah. lately too, though. Um, yeah. He's not to cut you off, talented. but um, you. what's his name? Uh, Duvall, Lil Duvall. Hey, he had a hit with that. Uh, he didn't had a couple of them. You right. Yeah, he said he used to perform those at his shows, mm-hmm. and he got Snoop on the joints and uh, smile. Like those are big records. Yeah, mm-hmm. what were you saying, Lone? I'm sorry, go ahead. I was just I don't know if I would take music career advice from somebody who signed a 360 deal. Yeah, that's a bar right there. Yeah, who don't rap said. on beat? You know, he just said so. a bar right there. That's a bar. Is it a you, bar? That's a bar. When you oh, think so. about 360, put it on wax, Lone. <laughs> yeah, that's a bar. <laughs> <laughs> I needed a uh, flex horn right there. Whoever, uh, I need one of those. That's a bar alone. Um, I am a writer for myself and others. <laughs> <laughs> He'd be doing so well, man. And he just. <laughs> <laughs> well, the funny thing is, it's actually true. So, anyways, take that. Ghost. Yeah, I said J. Div verse. <laughs> I'm only bigging up my brother. I feel you. Speaking of you, Long. Um, uh oh. Yeah, I'm coming at you on this one. You had a very interesting tweet uh, the other day, and uh, I'm gonna read your tweet. Okay, uh, straight straight to the. This is the first time I've been like quoted on a podcast. Yeah, I'm this about is, to quote you. So this, this is cool. longevity via Twitter uh, on yes, as the pastor say on yesterday. This might be mm. a little controversial, but the golden era of underground hip hop had to be between 2010 and 2014. The amount of dope music that dropped in the blog era might be incomparable. Did I quote you right? You read it. So I, <laughs> I haven't really thought about the quote much. We were chatting. You had a rebuttal to that, sir. Do you remember what your rebuttal was? A lot of was? people have responded to me, actually. Mm-hmm. Expand on your rebuttal, because I think yours was like, well. Terry picked just, up on what I was throwing. Yeah, Mine my, my just differentiated uh-huh. and put in layman's terms what he was saying. Okay. So. Emphasize specific words. Right. Okay. Certain, yeah, verbiage. You know, because sometimes people will look at it and jump out the window because it's, a lot it's of that followed by golden error. Right. So all you really seen was golden error. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? When you break it down to actual underground artists, because the era of time that he's talking about. Right. Um, 
that's it's kind of cloudy as far as what was out uh, mainstream right now to me. But it was Kanye was doing stuff. Well, that was actually well, 2010 and 2014. Well, Kanye, Kanye had was, been doing shit since like oh three. Drake, wow. it's a lot Drake. of Drake. Yeah, Drake. Drake Kanye. came in about twenty nine. Well, oh nine, oh yeah. eight, oh nine. Migos Kendrick was, and them weren't yeah. far behind Kendrick. Uh, but Kendrick was a part of that underground golden era. He definitely was. He, well, he was part of it. Um, J. Cole was J. Cole. part of it. Rhapsody uh, was Nipsey is actually part of that yeah. yep. That That's same underground era. That's a fact. Uh, yep. uh, Wiz Khalifa. Mac Miller. Mac Miller. Uh, when you actually break but, down the artists that were part of that era, and, and the reason why I think he can speak on that because we were heavily yeah digging up all that dope shit that's literally what right we were in front doing. of you my dark twisted fantasy is 2010 yeah yeah that's, but that's mainstream. not underground mainstream. but but i see Man. i know you're talking about what was popping popping back then yeah but can you can you kind of expand because i know you did he pretty T- much hit it T- terry pretty much explained it i think the the one thing i didn't emphasize enough was when i said the golden era i just meant the golden era of underground right i feel like it was different I don't know. I, I think it has a lot to do with access too. Okay. You know, like in the in that blog era right there, there was so much coming out because all of a sudden everybody that was dope had a had a way to get it to people, and it right. was just like, cool, find a blogger or throw it out to all. And, and I was the blogger. Me and Terry and I were the bloggers that were getting all this stuff and finding all this stuff. And there was so, I mean, the the amount of names that I could Odyssey. Yeah. Odyssey was a part of it, but even like the smaller Big names, Crit, Crit Pac yes. Div, Overdose, man, uh, East Coast was killing it. Um, shit uh, with Pac Div and uh, Friday Night Overdose. Lights. That's West Coast. Tanya Moore. They don't even they don't even get their uh, just do. Uh, but I mean, Ta- who said Tanya Morgan? Yeah, he did. Tanya Morgan. Yeah. Uh, Chicago save money, so Chance Vic Mensa. Cool yeah. kids, mm-hmm. cool was kids. That, or is that before? That, no, was, that was that was right the beginning of it. Mm-hmm. I'm looking um, at 2010 right now, mixtape wise. Hell, J Electronica. Yeah. Yep. Uh, J Cole, Friday Night Lights. Um, let's see, Freddie Gibbs, Straight Killer, No Filler. Freddie Gibbs is another one. Wale, more about more about nothing. Um, yeah. Uh, well, yeah, Big Crit, Crit was here. Yeah, that's so, I mean, Crit came up. Like I remember the first song that I heard from Crit. It was I Ain't Shit. Yeah, and uh, mm-hmm. it was he was rapping over somebody else's beat. Like I remember the artists that are big now. I would say that actually would was a little bit before 2010. A lot of these people were. Yeah, well, yeah. Technically, the blog era started earlier than that, but I feel like it got to a point where it was like full and thriving mm-hmm. at like 2009, 2010 ish, give or take. Mm-hmm. And there was so much music out. I mean, so when Action Bronson came out, Action Bronson was in that crew in that group as well. Um, God, there's so many people. I I had I was thinking of some names in my head just to because you asked me about that and I was like, man, there's just so many. Just go to Flying bring it down. Lotus. The, Flying Lotus. Go to bring it down the band. Look at our archives. Like Kate that's the, 2000. Well, Kate Trinata's damn near still kinda. He's just he was bubbling. on the he was on the a, the end of that yeah um the blog era, but it was just so much access, man. 2011, uh, two changed. Uh, true religion. I actually remember. Yeah, that. he was more mainstream two, though. I don't. I don't think you can even really say two chains was ever really underground, because so. he no, piggyback so. off Ludacris. Yeah. So uh, when Ludacris was player bubbling high. Yeah. And what, about was, Danny, what about Danny Brown? Danny Brown. Danny Brown. Yeah, was just on that list. Absolutely. Yeah, there, there's like a there's cool levels thing. too. Like the underground people like add to. Uh, there there were mm. levels of artists that. Um, I keep forgetting about that jump to mainstream, and then there are people that just lived in the underground, yep. and those are the artists that I'm talking about. I mean, Homeboy Sandman. Uh, what was what was that crew out of uh, Brown Bag? Remember Brown Bag All Stars had their time too. They were cooking I for remember a minute. That name. So Con you were, and them. You were pushing them hard back when we were doing cut camp. And yeah, shit. Just well, so I mean similar. that's when uh, um, uh, uh, what's her name? Uh, Odd Future came up mm. through that. Oh yeah. Big underground following. Was Pac Div out back then? Yes. Yeah. yeah. I remember. I remember. I really rock with Pac early. At early Pac Div. Yeah. Pac Div is a prime example of yeah, that. Yeah. I really rock with Pac Div. What about this? I don't know, man. So like, I really liked the super under, like the I don't know the un, the underground culture. So let's have this discussion when you say underground. Like, okay. I liked the underground culture from like 03. Okay. 
that that era going back further that's when you had people like mers okay. atmosphere you know slug you had yeah, sure. brother, little brother. coming out you had little yeah. brother you've got mm-hmm. uh mf doom doing shit at that point like right. you know Mad Lib. Um, Even you could almost make the argument that Slum Village was underground. So. Oh, yep. definitely. Good call. Yeah. Um, Good so call. Anything Dylan involved was underground. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. Um, Unless it was uh, the like Mary J. Records, or didn't he have a Mary J. Record? or hit an Erica Badu record? Um, tribe shit. Common shit. idea. Yeah. The Cats, rhyme you know, rhyme sayers. Stuff. Rhyme sayers. You yeah. said rhyme well, sayers. You, stones throw. You, know? you said two thousand three through what'd you say i don't know i was just thinking of that in that era era. yeah there were a couple years like that was i would say probably like three or four last emperor was putting shit out back then (laughs) Mm. why do you guys always laugh when i say last emperor (laughs) out of curiosity i don't know we've never had this discussion (laughs) it makes me think of a cartoon i don't know makes me think of a like a movie or something it was crazy last emperor have you ever listened to last emperor was signed to aftermath maybe i don't i'm not gonna lie and say that i have i'm not gonna lie i'll yeah i'll send you guys i'll put some in the bishop lamont if we're talking about people who were signed to aftermath bishop lamont i feel like bishop lamont was the beta test for kendrick lamar bishop lamont i haven't heard that name in a while but he actually could go to remember him yeah bishop lamont could go his song grow up still goes hard yeah he could rap I remember but a lot of these underground artists too i think too i think a big part of what i'm saying is just because i mean obviously hip-hop was underground early as well right um but it was just so many art like it, literally it would be like maybe it'd be, maybe it would be like going to the record store on a tuesday and randomly finding a record right right but this was like artists that didn't even have the ability to put like records out they could sure. just throw stuff on hulk share or, or mm. media fire and then Two dope boys would pick him up, or Nah Ride, or Fake Shore Driver. Just us, share the link. Kevin Nottingham, or, or yeah. DJ Booth back when they shared music. Yeah, you know, like it was just like, who is this guy? Had no idea who this person was, and be like, all right, cool. Like we used to make, uh, we did some, uh, we had a series with Metronome called the the B sides. Remember we did that, and we yeah. just threw like fifty B side tracks together of just a bunch of different artists. It's funny you stuff. said it. It's funny you said that because. I used to stumble on so much, stumble upon so much heat just by what he just said through those sites. Like I always just look for the media, the media fire link or the whatever link. I mean, it was every day. Facts. Every day. You're checking that shit you just every never knew who you yep. never know who you'd meet. Mm-hmm. I remember that. Yeah. I remember that. But now it's like. Or run into. Okay. Player boards. Okay. Oh. Player. Oh. Now that would be back to spools. That's early though. 2000s. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. how, that's how I got up on little brother. Like what's yeah. love was talking about. Yeah, that's like Oh three. Yeah. yeah. I was on a forum called Access Hip Hop. It was based yeah. out of San Diego. And that's how I got hip to uh, Blame One and all of them because he was actually on that message board. So with you running, you know. And then I, that, that connected me to Exile because they're friends. And then the whole Dirty Science team and that whole you actually put soul me on spasms to, uh, and stuff. You actually put me on to Exile. I, I learned about uh, Blue. I think I learned about Blue to Heavens but between you or Kenny, one of y'all put me on to them but um kenny actually shouts to pete's sake he actually i remember because i came i know random it was short kenny. story it was kenny I'm short sorry. story like this put was 2007 on. i think yeah and uh i think it was me and z came up to see you yeah clarence might have been with us too In chicago yeah and uh um kenny had already heard of blue in exile and I thought that I thought nobody had known about them. Let and me correct is, myself because Kenny did put me on. I remember now. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah, and then so that was definitely a bonding moment. Like, oh, somebody else that knows Blue in Exile outside of the people that I told about him. You know, yeah. and it's, it was really cool. I never forget, man. He told me, and I remember this. He walked in my room and said, "Hey, you got to listen to this album right now. You have to listen to this album right now. It's called yeah. Blue in Exile." I'm like. What is that? He's like, this, it's this dude, man. He makes these beats, and this guy raps. It's the perfect blend. I was like, all right, man. I'll take a listen to it. You know, I trust your opinion. And I came back like, God damn. You know who else came amazing. up? Who else came up in the underground in that same era was Miguel. Wow. Yep. He was on Blow the Heavens. Blow next to yeah. Cold Hearted. Cold Hearted. I think he sang on Cold Hearted. Yeah. He went by a different name, too, back then. Well, it was, well, it was like his Allo, first name, last Allo, name. Aloe yeah. Black. Yeah, Aloe Black. Black. That's what I was about Aloe Black is tough. He's done some work with XI, right? A lot of work yep. with XI. Mayor right? Hawthorne as well. Yeah. Mm, yeah. So you you run and bring down a band, obviously, still. You know, the Empire. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> I'm sitting at the t- top of the throne. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so do you think... How has it changed from an underground standpoint? Because you still post, yeah. you know, singles. You still post, you know, albums when we can. It's different. What What are some of the changes? Um, 
I think it's actually kind of went in a worse, uh, worse is a wrong word. I think access has become, there, there's, a, there's a certain, um, how do I say this? Streaming has taken over that. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, the blog, the blogging aspect. Uh, and that's why we adapted years ago. And mm-hmm. a lot of blogs have, uh, and a lot of them stopped, just disappeared. Um, cause it wasn't viable anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, people stopped going to blogs to check out music. And because of that, there's nobody really curating stuff except for like playlists now. Um, and, uh, I don't know. It's harder to me. It's harder to find stuff now. Okay. It's harder for, and maybe it's just cause I don't dig the same. Maybe I'm outdated now a little bit. Okay. Um, because I don't listen to stuff through playlists, but it's just, it's just not the same as it was. I, I remember waking up in the morning being like, all right, let me go check these three, four sites. So let me popping. check my email. Yeah. Let me check SoundCloud. Let me see what's going on. And then be like, Oh, cool. You yeah, know, now it's like rap caviar playlists on Spotify. And right. It's just, just so thrown random. together. It's, it's just, just random. For hold, the most hold that thought real quick. Let me shout out some of the partners real quick. Uh, we're about halfway through. Shout out to uh, Coleman Dental 317-255-8546. Sorry about that. I never can remember the number. <laughs> shout out to Dr. Coleman. Breaking down the band as always is the hub. Shout out to any CD and vinyl as well. Uh, they take care of us with the wax for all of our raffles. No bad ideas. We have hats strategically placed around the set here. They are. They have always looked out for us uh, uh, as a uh, partner for us, so we appreciate them as well. I ain't forget anybody, did I? That's the whole crew, right? Sure. Okay. I all was right. doing something. Else. <laughs> <laughs> all right. But Shouts back, to the partners. <laughs> yes. But uh, back to uh, what you guys are talking about um, in terms of how things have changed. You said it might be a little harder now to – to find some of those jewels. And I know you said, uh, J. Div, it's more about the playlists at this point in terms of where you might be able to I get just put on piggy, to. I piggybacked off him saying playlists, uh, but it's more random. Okay. So there's, in the uh, blog era, there was a little more structure as far as how it was, releases were made. Right. Because when artists dropped these songs, they wanted the blogs to pick them up mm-hmm. because that's where everybody's going to get those songs. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So there may be a song that dropped on this particular blog and it's like a special release for that blog. So you have to go to that blog to listen to it. Now everybody's pretty much taking it amongst themselves or on their own and they'll just shoot out a link and it's like a iTunes link or like pretty much a streaming link where you had an option to just listen and buy it. Right. There's no song and a download link anymore right you know what i'm saying because people weren't really worried about necessarily profiting off of the music i mean they were that that's that's the bottom line they were trying to get to right but they wanted it to get to you more than just i want you to pay to hear it yeah the culture's changed the culture's changed to uh uh it's it's good and bad uh, realistically i think the good parts about it is that it's kind of empowered the artist a little bit more to have a little bit more control over how they distribute their music okay which forces them to create their own fan base before you were kind of determined upon like bringing down the band's fan base or two old boys fan base and then you still had to convert those people now it's like i'm putting it out there and you have to do your own work to can get to develop that so for us who are just random consumers right we had you know who's where are we where are those things where we're being guided to check these things out it's just Mm -hmm. a little bit harder nowadays for me anyways yeah kind of adapted to uh pretty much the nature of music releases period today because with the the internet uh it's a lot easier to get to the music right at first everything was just getting leaked and People decide, all right, well, if it's getting leaked, I'm just going to throw it out there because I want people to know who I am. And now, since the whole streaming and um, iTunes, Google Play, all of that shit came about, it's like, well, I'm going to throw it out there, but I want to get paid for it now. It's like it it flipped in order to, okay, I, I know how I can get paid now versus... People just stealing the music for free. And it's it's kind of a good thing. I mean, I, I do think it empowers the artists to be more responsible and more accountable for the things they're doing. I remember. Um, but it does. There, But for the consumer, I guess maybe for me as a consumer, maybe not for everybody. It's just a little harder to find shit now. But I remember um, the early stages of 
bringing down the band versus, you know, where it is now. And I remember you talking about um, how you guys received submiss- submissions. People would send stuff in, mm-hmm. you know, for you guys to review or to listen to and to possibly get placed on the on the blog. Um, so now... Do the submissions still come in, or is it is yeah. it different how they're sent in? Is it like well, I changed check my playlist out I, versus I cha- we, we've changed our process throughout the years. So it started off, we just had an email address. Okay, and it got to the point we were getting over a hundred, hundred and fifty emails a day. Uh, wow! And it was just like, and I was checking them too. Yeah. And the problem was is that even though I and between Terry and myself, what we had like a multiple tiered system. So like yeah. I'd go through and listen to them really quick. Anything that wasn't complete trash, I just forward to the next email. And then we would just go through and just re-listen to them with another ear. It's kind of like a quality control process, really. Yeah. And then uh, from there, you know, we would pick the good ones and share them. Gotcha. Um, we used to post like, what, 10, 12 times a day? Yep, that was you know? the goal. And so, I mean, lots of music would come out all the time. Um, and then it changed. Uh, I was like, you know, this is too much. Because the problem with that process was that we would get out of, let's say, 100 tracks like two that were good, mm-hmm. you know, it was just a oh, lot. The, race, the ratio was that lopsided. And then that really, actually really turned bad. into a segment called Welp, <laughs> which we, we stopped. Yeah. It was called We Laugh and Play. I remember yeah. that. That was funny. Yeah. Yeah. And we, we used to share the really, really Welp. funny shit. Yeah. 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 So feelings probably was heard about well, that. Definitely. I've definitely been targeted a few times for, oh, man. for some of those. I, I got to the point where I, I was like, ah, it makes more sense to focus that energy towards stuff I do like. It was we funny, do like, though. but it, a lot I mean, of that stuff was. You might be able to find the archives. Mm-hmm. So if I look. mean, if you get on Welp, like instead of being mad that you on Welp, just share a link to your family. Like, yo, we made it on bringing down the band. <laughs> we've got a whole, we've got a whole generation of Welps right now doing perfectly Boy, fine. Should do a Welp mixtape. Got more uh, money than us. <laughs> On some well bad well, shit. Well, Raz, <laughs> I was that's, watching, that's real. I, I was watching a Raz Kaz interview with Talib Kweli on his yeah. uh, what is it called? People's Party. People's Party. It's very. It's, and, that's uh, very good. By the way, and Raz Kaz said uh, he's like hip hop is the only John or the only profession where the worse you are, you get rewarded for it. He's like I couldn't like crash a plane and be promoted. No, nah. <laughs> you know, and, <laughs> You're right? No, Ice JJ Fish got a new album out. He's oh from, word! He's from that era too. Yeah, he got well. Shout out to Chicago, a, su- a suburb. I Is he from Chicago? Put- Suburbs. Is suburb. he? Yeah, he, he, he from up that way. They don't blame him. We need to book think him. About, think about his name. I'm trying to book Ice him. J.J. Jay Fish. Fish. I'm yeah. trying to book him. Huh? What you booking him for? I don't know. It could, can't be more than about a G. No, I'm talking about you, what are you booking him for to come <laughs> like read to kids or what do you, what <laughs> nah, do you want him for to do? him to come perform and do his dance. All right, kids. <laughs> Something about you, girl. Uh, Look, wait, they used to book a uh, turquoise G. Yeah, that they did. did. They did. Yeah. I remember that. Yeah, yeah they, Hell, they I've been to two or three times. of their shows. I can't even. Find <laughs> they came to like all. Connors one time, I believe. Yeah, that smang it shit. They was uh, smash and bang, smash it and bang. And the thing is, they stay in character. Like when they come to the after party. Yeah, yeah. that's kind of. That's pretty I cool. swear, I used to think uh, <laughs> one of them was uh, Charlie Murphy. Oh no! <laughs> Big thick oh. mustache. Yeah. Rest in peace, John. <laughs> Indeed, rest in peace. But yeah, just really quick, we went from the whole collection. I ended up taking the time and creating creating a form on the website okay. that people had to like fill out, just to kind of like cut down on that, the that way. That way, quality we're not, control. We out the bullshit. Hey yeah. man, and then people that really wanted to submit to us would take the time to submit to us. Yeah, and then it still would be bullshit. It would, but the, the ratio was a lot better. <laughs> yeah, John, the ratio okay. was a lot better. And then eventually, uh, we've adapted it now to where the only thing we do now is we share on YouTube. So you can submit us to be on our YouTube channel, and if we like it, we'll put you on there. Funny thing about bringing, for a fee. Funny thing about <laughs> bringing out a band is. Like bringing down a band has shared so many people that have gone on to do things, or if you will, quote unquote, but they weren't those people back then. And it's just funny, like to see, like ahead of the curve, if you will. Like a lot of people talk. Kind of shit, a, lot of, a lot of people talk about they were ahead of the curve, but they really weren't because nobody cared. Like people actually cared about bringing down a band, and y'all were ahead of the curve. But oh well, it's, it's what it is. It's I wonder if you go back to the Welp series. If any of those cats made it big, no, no. There is one really, really funny guy on there. He had like a song about Thomas the Train Engine and shit, <laughs> 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 and he had another one that was like video games. I, yeah. I can't tell if he was a c- comedian or if he was doing it seriously. 
But Didn't I love to wear like a wave cap or some shit. Yeah, he's from like Seattle or some shit. Yeah. He might have a lane, man. What's my boy name? Play the keyboard. That's real funny, but he's talented. Oh, you talking about Mark Rebelay? Yeah, he's that's cold. different. He's yeah, different. He's, yeah, he, he's he actually cold. make beats and shit on the yeah. on the fly. But they're good though. Yeah, and yeah. he's just comedic. Fucked up lyrics. Yeah, he's tough. It's but like, it sounds baby. good. Baby. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now nah, he's tough. His shows sell out here. Oh, I believe yeah. it. Sold out quick. Two of them. When Lowen showed both of them. When Lowen showed me the video of, of that guy, the first I looked past all the comedy, I laughed, but I looked at Lowen and was like, "Yo." I told These you beats that. are pretty good though. I told you I was like, "Hey man, fly. listen to him, but his, yeah. his his beats are dope." Yeah, I laughed second after I, you know, obviously you get past the comedy shit, but I was like, "Yo, this dude is really dope." He's, making, he's making dope beats records. On spots. He's in different different styles yeah. on yeah. the fly, so you yeah. can tell he's talented. He so. got the funk in him. I ain't mad at him. I'm not mad at that. All right, let's see. So, so yeah, 2010, 2014. Okay, I see where you're coming from now. That I, I, when I saw it on Twitter, I was like. What is he talking yeah, about? Not to confuse it with, and what I what I would say is like the ninety the golden era, ninety Give me to the about two thousand. Somebody tweeted me uh, ninety two to ninety eight. Ninety two to ninety eight as the golden era. That's what somebody tweeted. We're just gonna forget about all about eighty eight. Yeah, see, I was thinking. I mean, that's kind of going into it. I would 88 say eighty eight definitely. I would definitely eighty eight to ninety five, ninety six maybe. I would I actually, stretch it out. Further. I actually agree with ninety two to ninety eight. Maybe ninety nine. But when you talking about eighty eight, you talking about bring uh uh BDP. You talking about Rock him, Rock him. You talking about, you talking big, about Daddy big Daddy Kane? Yeah, rap. you gotta put them in there. Uh, man. Heavy D, Marley Marl was killing it. Yeah, yeah Run that's true. Was putting out yeah. their second or third project, I think. Yeah, I, I that's, think that's pretty got, golden. I think the music got better in like ninety two. That's uh, all. <laughs> As somebody that I can, <laughs> a lot I can of honestly in say. Yeah, I can Don't honestly that. say that I've I've listened to hip hop from the beginning of it being popular and even before up to now. So pretty much my whole life. I mean, I I was at Fresh Fest. So what would you give as it? a little ass kid? You know what I'm saying? So would you say 88 then? I w- I would I would include 88 because I think back to 88. Like eighty seven, eighty eight. Let me give you let me give you albums in eighty eight. Public enemy. <laughs> look at all that. I can look just look at the covers and just be like straight Damn. out of Compton. Yeah. Uh it takes a nation. <laughs> Slick Rick, Great Adventures. Yeah. yeah. Strictly business, EPMD. Yeah. Uh Long Live the, Long Live the Cane. Long Live <laughs> the Cane. By yeah. any means necessary. Uh BDP. Critical beatdown, ultra magnetic MCs. Mm. Uh Run DMC tougher than leather. Yeah. So salt and pepper. Hmm. Don't do, Look, said, mm. Don't do that long. Don't do that long. Schoolie, smoke some kill. Schoolie D. Schoolie D. Shout out to Schoolie D. I know <laughs> love, love, love Schoolie. Hammer, let's get it started. Don't uh, hate on that. Hey, so, let's so, get I'm it. not. Let's get you it. You can't even front though. You I can't, can't front. front on. I can't, I can't, can't front. front. Ninety two. Uh, uh, Hammer Don't Hurt Him came out right. All right. No, okay, Texas. So 89. we go. So we go. Eighty nine. Three feet. Three feet high and rising. Man. Right? That could be my yeah. favorite. It sounds crazy. Maybe all hail the queen. My favorite Dela album. Yeah. Uh, I still say 92. It's incredible. You're killing me long. Unfinished business. Uh, EPMD. EPMD. No yeah. more Mr. Nice Guy Gangstar. Gangstar. I feel yeah. like the biz, the biz never sleeps. I think the music changed, though. No one the can do it better than the DLC. Life is too short. <laughs> mm. And you can probably trace it back to the types of machines they were using to produce the records. That matters. It I does. agree. And that to me, that's that matters. It changed. They got more RAM. Got got more space. It definitely to, got to more, be more musical and more, to me more sample and, time. Exactly, and so because of that, the music got better to me. And uh, so I, they were doing what they, what they could with what they had. And and this is tough, great. man. Nineteen ninety, America's most wanted, Ice Cube. Hey, Mama said, "Knock you out, LL." Hey, uh, Fear of a Black Planet. Uh, hey. Planet. People's instinctive travels. Mm. Yep. Come on, man. Go to, go to ninety. Talk to me, man. Ninety six. No, I'm with you. But, but you know I mean, what? If if I'm you not, name I'm the top five from any year, it's going to seem like oh, that was the year. You got to start looking at the sh- bullshit that came out in particular years. 90, yeah? But ninety six is one of my favorite years. All eyes on me. The score. Reasonable doubt. It was written Machiavelli. At Aliens. Illadel Half Life. Mm, that right there year. alone. Shit gives me chills. I would say. About I would eight to ninety six. I would actually that's probably extend it to two thousand because two thousand had a ton of fucking dope. Releases that's why. Too. That's why I say. To 2000 at least. So 88 to 2000 is the golden era. I would, I would, I would agree. So I'd we got Marshall Mathers LP. We got Stank on You, Supreme Clientele, 
Uh, Things fall apart. Reflection eternal. Like water 99. for chocolate. Like water for chocolate. Aquemini. Aquem. Uh, was that Stagonia? Yeah. Stagonia is two thousand. So mm-hmm. Aquemini was the year before. Aquemini was right. ninety eight. There you go. Okay. The W. Wu Tang. Well. So see, then we're getting. Well, to that the, was the last Wu. It's like good album though. Agree. Yeah. Was that before yeah. Iron Flag? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Iron 30, Flag 30 was kind of good. Yeah, gravel pit on it. Last of a Dying Breed from H&I Scarface. H&I by Prodigy is very underappreciated. That's a great album. I like it a lot. Yeah. And, and, I and it regardless of what anybody says, Uh-oh. and I wasn't even a big No Limit fan, to be careful. some of them P albums was classic and there definitely so add to the culture. There, <laughs> it was Jay what? Said there was, was so, so much, much bullshit. bullshit it was. I mean, you had to sift through it, which like, is somebody like myself was doing. So my homies in the neighborhood bought Every single one of those releases. This yeah. is when everybody had us add in the source. Yeah. So 90, I get in the car and listen to what they playing. And it's like, eh, bro, I'm cool. Ninety three though. Yeah, I feel you though. Ninety three. Ninety three. In the thirty six chambers. I'm sorry. Marauders. I said ninety two. I meant ninety three. <laughs> <laughs> no, I did because Nas's album came out ninety three too. Ninety four. Right? Uh, oh, yeah, you're right. right. It was. Yeah, Enter, the 30, Enter the 36 chambers. Midnight Marauders. Doggy style. Yeah. Enter the stage. Slam, Black Boom. Onyx. Yeah. Slam. Return of the Boom Bap, KRS One. Yep. yep. Uh, Just different. To death, do us part, Ghetto Boys. Pull up ninety one. Uh, coming out hard. A-ball coming out MJG. hard. A ball MJG. Mister Scarface, the world is yours. Mm. Look. Yeah, nineteen ninety nine. I can still see those album covers. Uh, while you what year you strictly say? for my pull up ninety one. Yeah. Let's talk yeah, about nineteen ninety one. Nineteen ninety one. I always feel there was a dip in ninety one. Low end theory. Death certificate. Minus low end theory. Breaking Adams. We can't be stopped. Right. I, just like, I just feel like there was a lot of they bullshit. Lasso was dead. Yeah, like, quick, quick is the name. Once again, we're naming what about apocalypse f- now. What about fifty one fifty? The Easy E record. See, look. <laughs> See, o- what was only if you want it is a record. DJs do not need do not play only that they need to play in their NWA sets. Hey, to. Home Bakes by uh, Will Smith. I've never played that. And, uh, only if you want it. Cold. Or, or, okay, what y'all say? Home Base. Yeah, that album was called Peaceful was it? Journey. It was. Off summertime alone. Only if well, you want just to. summertime. Don't do that. Uh, Chub Chub Rock, the one. Mm, okay, maybe I'm. Tripping. Do also one. I'm tripping about ninety one. Either their first or second championship in ninety one. Peaceful Journey, Prince yeah. of Darkness, Big Daddy Kane. Oh, that was some bullshit. Peaceful what? Journey was not. <laughs> was that uh, that like heavy trans- best yeah, for the that's, ladies? That's that's when. But Big that had gotten for love, right? Started no. to be for. The I'm talking about no. Big Daddy that's Kane's later. Prince right. of that's Darkness. Later. Yeah. You're, that's later. Forever My Lady. Jodice. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay, <laughs> let's not get into the R&B. Hey. R&B was the R&B, back The then. R&B couldn't be stopped in 91. Couldn't be stopped. That's a fact. That's a fact. You can't tell me shit Lost. about R&B then. MTV had to change their format in 91 <laughs> because they were like, how do we play black music that's not rap? So you say, I'm, I'm, I want to make sure we get everybody on record. Terry says 88 to 2000. I'd agree with that. Lone. I'd say 93 to Halfway through 2000. 93 to halfway through 2000. <laughs> but 2000, yeah. Spools. Yeah. 88 to 98, probably. 88 to 98. Jay Moore. 88 to 94. Damn. I think I'm going to go 80. slimmed 80, it down. I think I'm going to go 88 to 98. Well, I know you changed it. 88 to 96, because a lot of shit changed in 96. By Reason, the Reasonable doubt. Because that's the day that... Um, the Nas album and the De La album came out on the same day. Yeah, yeah, it and was that written. Was, that's when there was a real split there you go. in hip hop. You might be able to say scale it down to ninety nine, but I would definitely Man, give it ninety seven and ninety six and ninety seven. Wu Tang Forever. It, it's hard to it's yeah. hard it's hard to miss like ninety seven to ninety nine. Yeah, like that's a good point. That's a good point. But I see ninety nine was like a pat like a pass Def Jam by roster was stupid. When at the end of ninety of the nineties, think about it. Yeah, but there was a time when Def Jam, like Red Man and and Warren G, basically saved Def Jam because Russell was signing a whole bunch of bullshit. Ninety nine yeah. was uh, think signed, about this. Uh, he signed Nin- ODB. Think about this though. Ninety nine was Slim Shady LP. Things fall apart. Black on both sides. That's why it's hard to miss this year. Chronic two thousand might be the best year ever. Internal affairs. <laughs> <laughs> that was the era statement. of you have to go buy a CD every Tuesday. Oh, I spent so much ones. money. Murder music, Mob Deep. 
Ooh. Murder music was not Artist storytelling. Oh, no, I know you know no, that. Never mind. I'm thinking of Hell on Earth. Hell on Earth was not a good album the to f- me. I, what? I disagree what? completely. Hell I on think Earth went super hard. Hell that on Earth shit was, was cool. Incredible. Drop a gem Wait, on way them? better than Murder or maybe music. It might, I might be. I might be flipping it too. I don't actually. know about that, Spools. The world is mine. Are you kidding me? Wait a minute. Let me look it up. I gotta look it up. Hell on Earth is way better than I Murder think Music. I might yeah. be flipping Hold on, it too. Wait a minute. The Infamous is way better than Murder Music too. The first two are. Let me double check. I you might be right. Yeah. Let me yeah. double check. Not counting the juvenile, juvenile hell. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So Hell on Earth. Drop a gem uh, on them. Yeah. Like yeah. When I'm they support, Were they winning? G-O-D part three when like, they yeah, went after Pac songs. after he was dead. Yeah, I'm. I'm not. Okay. Yeah, Maybe you, that's why I didn't like that. Yeah, you tripping. Maybe yeah, that's, that's why I didn't yeah, like it. That's probably you why. Tripping. Yeah, that's that probably why cold. I didn't like it. Yeah, that album was cold. I mm-hmm. bought that album too. I think that the the now that he brings up the Pac disc is probably might have been why. I ain't using your feelings. Just say too. using your feelings. That's hey, I just said that's probably why. I ain't fuck Don't with get I'm mad. I'm sure at that me. wasn't recorded. It had to have been recorded before. <laughs> it was probably it probably was, but you know they had time to pull it back. I was like, you. I was like using your feelings. So. Incredible. Okay. He was like, no, G-O-D. I just said that. I bought the album. Godfather Part 3. <laughs> Man, what? that shit's incredible. Dude. Ooh, I might have to have them play that tonight at Coaches. <laughs> that was a quick plug there. I see. You know what the, I mean? infa- my, the Infamous my, is always still my favorite. My the Infamous got though. heat. The infamous hey, Prodigy hey, solo joint is cold, though. You know, you know what Boy. Prodigy joint? Uh, it was a... Uh, Return of the Mac. That might be one of the hardest albums ever recorded. Yeah. What he did with the Alchemist. Yeah. Mm. Hey, but that, but that H and I C though. We yeah, going that was, diamonds. Was like there's heat all over that. Oh, album. the joint he had with BG. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. you got wisdom on him. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. See, that's yeah. why you they never got to dip into the two thousand, just based off Cash Money shit. Because Cash Money doesn't. If, you have... if you're not including, <laughs> not straight up, Manny Fresh. You ain't gotta tell me about Manny Fresh. It's a bad but, motherfucker. But that don't man. mean those albums were classic. That's not what I said. I think 400 degrees. Was. 400 degrees is definitely. That's one of the best albums definitely. they ever dropped. But we're just Chopper talking City about in the ghetto. We got to figure out just an era. It Come can't on, be like, man. Okay. You know, can't be like pop started in '73 <laughs> and it's 2019. It can't be half of the time of hip hop. <laughs> I, I, I still the golden. I still era, stick right? with 88 to That's 96. I mean, that was a lot era. of good shit. That's a long time. Like I think we just to, we probably have to just Terry gives. You know, yeah, 2015. I mean, that's 10 years. <laughs> like, I scaled it back. Oh, I thought you were saying damn near going to the 2000s. No, Terry I mean, said, started with 2000, and I was like, maybe the 99. Terry and if you think about that, it's only 10 years, 10, 11 years. <laughs> I thought you just said we damn near got to go into the 2000s because I of said cash in money. two 2000. But that's uh, still when from- four when 400 degrees came out. That was 1999. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So there it is. Yeah, as and actually in the 98. <laughs> Yeah, I mean. So I mean, that's a ten, eleven year I guess, span. I guess the con- the consensus says, is minus loan. Ninety eight. The consensus is minus loan that we got at least sneak the the last part of those eighties <laughs> in before we count the golden era, just because. Of and that feels about a decade, dude, apparently. Yeah, huh? about ten years, ten, eleven years. Yeah, about ten years. Yeah. I'm not mad at it. I mean, no, I'm, I'm just I've, saying, I've, like I've that's. Been, I've been I've said many times that I don't really enjoy music from the '80s and hip hop. You've been you've been very consistent. So yeah, I can respect I'm not it. Mad at that. Yeah. The musicality just wasn't there, yeah. and I understand why. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you're coming from sample, a, I teach a, it. Yeah, different place. Sample rate it definitely. Sense, it, and for me, it wasn't even really about the musicality back then. It was more the feeling it gave me. Yeah, and I didn't come up in that time, so right. I went back to it. And so when I went back to it, it was just like, eh, all right, I, I get it. That makes but, sense. I'm not mad at that. Yeah, I'm not. We not. I'm not dissing you. I'm just saying that's just a difference of opinion. That's cool. Like I get it. See, I went back to it and was like, oh, yeah, that was incredible because I was hearing so many references because I was so into hip hop. You know what? You know, and you're also a lyrics person school, though. You're also early, a lyrics person though too. Yeah, first, yeah, and I'm not. And I was hearing those references, like the yeah. you know. Certain references made to Karis One and Big Daddy Kane and Rakim yeah. and going back and hearing that shit and being like, oh, there it is. Yep. Yeah, and then, for then sure. being like, oh, I, I see why they reference them. This shit is dope. A lot and of my reasons. But I understand your part too, because like we said before, is it's just know, how I limited listen. from a production standpoint. And that's what I hear you know? first. Yeah. It's like that, then the product, and then if I like the product, then I listen to the lyrics. That's that's what, they, did, they did really damn well. People like Marley Marl and Cats like that did real well with what they had. Absolutely. Larry Smith. Yep. No denying, no denying that at all. 
Uh, I actually would like to, I guess, to expand on what Lone is talking about. I teach this history in the production class, so I mean. Oh, for sure, for sure. So I mean. But I, I used to go back to some of the older production to li- to listen to what they could come up with based off knowing how limited it was. Like, you think about Pete Rock and the SP, like. Well, Pete Rock was different, though. But when you listen to, like. Pete Rock like, is of the newer era. Yeah, he was more newer, but I'm talking about, like, even Rock Hill. Like, when you start, when you start listening to some of that stuff with him and Eric B., like I'm like, yo, they only had X, they only had X amount of tracks, yeah, X amount of sample time, and to be able to put these joints together and yeah. still have them come out cold, like large professor yeah. always gets left out of the conversation. One hundred percent. So I still remember how yes, good two yeah. short albums sounded back then. To me, all yeah. that eight oh eight shit, man. Like, just how, yeah, how it was produced, bro. man. <laughs> like the song <laughs> "Life," <laughs> "Life is Too Short." Oh yeah, dude, was so cold to me back then. Hey. I love that shit too. I yeah. remember. I ain't how tripping, all man. Again. Oh yeah, dude. Even if you don't, even if you don't, because Too Short's catalog is so like huge. I'm not gonna lie and say I know every Too Short album, or even some of the ones that are. I I know the obvious ones, but there are some that some that I'm like, okay. I might not know these, but I still know for a fact his impact. You can mm-hmm. hear it on the sound then. Like, there's stuff that you still hear that's like pulling from Manny Fresh. It's but pulling if you, from Too Short. Yeah. It's pulling from all those casts. And if you think about it, it's actually went back to that. So True. if you if you think about how Too Short record sounded, yep. the the most popular shit out right now mm-hmm. is pretty much Too Short beats, essentially. Yeah. Yeah, stripped down. Yeah, not that complicated. That's why I always heavy eight oh eight. But it was banging though. That's oh, why. Yeah. I, that's why I've always appreciated Chuck English in his production because yeah. he was very much like a modernized version of throwback eight oh eight music. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I so can all do that. you bitches, hoes, <laughs> and, all and all that, that shit. shit. I wasn't even supposed to be listening to that. Yeah, me, but me when either. that none beat of us came supposed to be listening. None to that. of us were. Yeah, when actually. that shit dropped though, it, it damn near grabbed you. It's like damn. <laughs> what think, is this? You think NWA and Dre had a maybe a was a big part of like a bridge? From oh no, that question. era to the a newer from a production standpoint. Dre Dre was I think honestly the biggest key element of that entire thing was the the was the Technolo- MPC. Technology. It was the, it was, the, it was the technology and the the SPs and from all the, that. Yeah, like, from the SP from from being able to to be able to sample more. You know, like I mean, things it, changed with the with the NPC. It 100%. used to take five minutes to load up a sample. Yeah. yeah. Like any of the any listeners that are actually younger or whatever, like really go look on YouTube and watch somebody use a SP twelve hundred yeah. and have them explain about how much time they had to sample for those. I think it's eight tracks on. on. They had to speed up the sample to get double that, the time. Right, like. If you really look at that machine for what it is, you see how limited it is. But when you're going from just using four tracks to eight tracks, shit. That's like a huge jump, yeah. I can do all this now? And then you go from <laughs> that to an NPC machine. Right. Right. Like, it's it's just crazy, yeah. man. So yeah. Now it's just, just endless. I've always respected. Um, so I think it, that I think it's mostly technology to answer yep. your question. Yeah. Makes sense. That's my thought. But it, it also... Um, and who had access to it. Kind of so, the... The flip side of the musicality that you're talking about, for them to be able to do that with those limited resources speaks volumes, too. I give them peace for, for sure. that. 100%. Absolutely. I give them peace for that. Mm-hmm. I agree. I definitely agree. All right. So. You are correct. <laughs> Good talk. So we got a couple minutes left. Uh, let's make sure we shout out uh, our Patreon. Make sure you go to patreon.com backslash new old heads. Uh, Please. We have multiple options for you to be a part of that uh that is where you'll get uh included for raffles so you can win hats wax uh provided by any cd and vinyl one of our partners so make sure you guys do that also go to youtube and search bringing down the uh if you search that make sure you hit the bell for the notifications when you find bringing down the band so you can you know stay in the loop with all the albums and you know singles that we promote there uh if you want to talk some shit <laughs> Join the community, and you can yes. find. We're open to it. You can yeah. find all this, all these links at newoldheads.com. Yes. Yeah. So yes, but that is very valuable because we, uh, as we continue to grow and continue to 
you know, spread out the product. We need all the support that we can get into everybody that's been down with us. Shit, we charted on the iTunes thing. That was Man, kind of that's neat. tough. That was what awesome. number were we at? 897. 897 or something you, like when that. When you look at it on its face value, it's like, oh, 897. But when you think about how many podcasts are in the mm. world. That's well, on the Apple. music charts, too, though, so I don't know. And then again, when I looked at the charts, Ellen's podcast was on it, so I don't think it's just music. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay, okay. She was like 250. I'm thinking, hold up, she's 250, and we're 800. <laughs> <laughs> we on our way. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> I'm not mad at it. I'll take it. Charting is charting, in my opinion, so... That is going to do it for this episode. Again, make sure you go uh, search Bringing Down the Band uh, on YouTube so you can subscribe. Hit that notification bell. And uh, again, as always, we appreciate the support. And we will see you all next week. In a minute. Uh Uh-huh.